Michael. I'm a software developer. Oh, thank you. Uh, I work uh, three blocks that way, out of my house. And uh, recently, I wanted to make a dApp. Um, I kind of had an idea for a tic-tac-toe game. So the idea is that you can create a game, uh, engage with opponents, play it. It keeps state on the blockchain. All of your moves are done through uh, transactions. Um, I should probably back up a bit and explain that this is uh, Ethereum and using smart contracts. So. Uh, if you want to do something like that, there is a uh, framework for developing dApps. It's called Truffle. Um, has anybody here already played with Truffle? Cool. All right. Um, so for the rest of you guys, hopefully this will this will be interesting. Um, it's kind of like app development on steroids. If you guys know like Rails, it's kind of like an out-of-the-box solution. So the very first step of Truffle is it is installed as an NPM uh, package. So it's... Uh, um, you know, you use NPM, install it, it's there locally. Um, if you guys don't have any experience with NPM, um, you install that too. When you create a Truffle project, it will create files for you. So it'll create your entire directory structure. Um, it'll create uh, contracts, uh, migrations, it'll create a test directory, um, and then a build folder. So uh, I'll just go over what those things are. The, uh, actually I'll get to them in, in a second. The other piece that you want is a local copy of the uh, Ethereum blockchain, uh, not the main one, uh, but one that you can develop against. So you have a couple options. The first option is uh, something called test RPC. Um, and so when you run that, it runs a uh, you know, local blockchain. It gives you some accounts to start off with, play around with. Uh, I think it puts money in them, Ethereum, and uh, some private keys for the account. So if you use something like MetaMask or something, you can put in MetaMask and you know, interact with your dApp through the browser. You also have the option of another uh, solution that Truffle puts out called Ganache. I don't actually know what Ganache is. I think it's a food pun. Um, they sort of, yeah, like their, like their puns. But it's just uh, basically the exact same thing. You can see there's a bunch of accounts with balances. Uh, for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to go with uh, TestRPC. Um, the next step, I can't really help you with. Uh, Solidity is kind of a fickle language, um, so you want to write some code in that. Um, in this case, I'm going through a really simple one. Uh, creating a contract, it has a function, and it has an internal data store called a mapping. And a mapping is just going to take every possible address, and um, that's like a, a hash or a dictionary, a hash map, something, that's the key. And then the value is some sort of data type. So in this case, it's uh, unsigned in. Uh, and we're going to call that number of games and make it public. Um, I don't want to get too much into solidity, but making it public means there's a getter uh, method for it. I think it also probably creates a setter method. But in this case, we're creating a, a setter, no setter. Just getter? Just getter. No setter. All right. <laughs> um, so then we're creating a, another public function called create game. And when you call this, uh, you're not going to give it any parameters. Instead, it's just going to infer who's calling it. And that's uh, derived from message.sender. If you guys have played around with Solidity, that's something that just comes baked into the language. So we're going to say when this function gets called, we are going to increase uh, the value of the number of games. So if I call it, I start off with zero games. I call it, and now I have one game. I call it again, I have two games. Pretty straightforward. Um, once I've built that contract, uh, I'm going to run compile. And if I don't have any syntax errors, it's going to produce something that sort of looks like this. If I do have syntax errors, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hear about it. And I think it uses uh, Sol C, the Solidity compiler, uh, under the hood. Um, it will also produce a uh, ABI. Um, that is the application binary interface. So that tells you if you're like a JavaScript consumer of this contract, uh, what parameters you have to send to a function, what values you can expect to return, what functions are available, uh, that kind of thing. So you need that in order to interact with any sort of contract that's been deployed onto the blockchain. The next thing that I want to do, so I have this, this built contract, I want to put it on the blockchain. In my case, I'm going to put it on my test RPC network. I need to configure Truffle. Truffle gives you a, a JavaScript config file. Um, pretty simple, telling it local, ho ho local host port 8545. Um, once I do that, now I can migrate the, uh, the build artifact, the contract, to the, uh, to the blockchain. So I run truffle migrate, and it will create a transaction. And so this will send the uh, compiled contract and the payload of the transaction to the blockchain. And in return, I get an address of the contract. 
Uh, it goes pretty quick. Just know that right now we're going to grab the address, the contract, and use it later. Like all good projects, you should probably test it. Um, I don't know if you actually do, but you should. Uh, in this case, it uses uh, Mocha. So if you guys are uh, using JavaScript, it's a pretty common framework. Uh, it looks a lot like RSpec for Ruby. Um, all I know is JavaScript and RSpec, so that's as far as my analogies go. Uh, instead of a overall sort of describe, it gives you a contract, and then each individual assertion is wrapped in an it function. So in this case, you're saying, hey, everybody starts with zero games. Um, this contract gives you a list of accounts. Um, if you guys have played around with Web3, which is the JavaScript library for interacting with dApps in a browser, it's uh, using Web3 here. So Web3 will give you the ability to you know, uh, deploy a contract, use it once it you know, has successfully been deployed. Uh, keep in mind that because this is the test, you know, it's going to do its own deployments to the blockchain. Um, it's not going to use an already deployed contract because you, know, you don't want to be modifying the state of you know, your, your production code. Um, so all we're doing here is we're saying, hey, when this, when this contract is deployed, get a copy of it as instance. Uh, we're going to call it with uh, the first account. And when that's done, uh, it's going to use a promise. You can't call these things synchronously. Uh, it's going to return the value, and we're just going to make an assertion that that number that comes back is zero. And we're going to say the user starts with zero games. So that's pretty much it. Once we run it, uh, truffle test, moment of truth. I know in this case that it will probably pass. Uh, it passes, which is good. Um, and then you can add more tests or move on, you know, something like that. If you practice uh, TDD, uh, you can add a second test. So here I've sort of uh, co code folded up the first one. The second one now says, all right, well, great. I start with zero games, but now when I call create game, I should go up to one, right? So in this case, we have two thens. We start from this blank state, uh, and then we, uh, we, create a, or sorry, we create a game, and then we call number of games, and then we assert that that value is now equal to one. And uh, that passes as well, thankfully. Um, probably should have written the test first. But what Truffle also allows you to do, and this is my favorite part, is uh, it allows you to interact with your deployed contract on the blockchain through a console. Oh. So yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a REPL. Um, what you can do is if you take the address of the deployed contract, uh, you can then say tic-tac-toe, which is the contract name, at this address. And now you can start interacting with it. You can say create game. You can say number of games. And so in this case, I'm using that public number of games uh, getter method. And it returns 0 in the beginning. Um, I say create game. The transaction is successful. And now I say do it again. It returns 1. I create another game. And I do it again. And I'm up to 2. So you can sort of see if you're more of a uh, visual learner. You, know, you can interact with it that way. It's pretty cool. Other things you can do from within the console is you can just retest. You don't have to exit the console. You can compile. You can migrate, uh, stuff like that. Yeah, so I didn't really get into like what it looks like once this app is deployed on the blockchain. Uh, Truffle is good for building it, um, deploying it. You, um, because it's an NPM package, you can just run NPM in that directory. And if you have assets, like if you have your you know, JavaScript file that is responsible for you know, your single page app or you know, whatever JavaScript you want. It'll serve that up, CSS, HTML, stuff like that. Uh, if you want to integrate it with another you know, application framework, I think then you need to do a little bit more legwork. But yeah, you can just can, you know, change the config file to deploy it to the mainnet if you want. You can box up your project and publish it so anybody else can pull it down. Or you can pull down somebody else's box, kind of like Docker. Um, and then it also comes with, and I haven't played around with this yet, integration with Redux, if you guys have used that, to uh, do state management of the DOM. So like, when you get a transaction result coming back, then you know, you'll know, OK, update this part of the DOM, put a little bit more sanity to your JavaScript. That's all I got. <laughs>